Hi everyone, welcome back, I'm Molly. Today we're going to learn how to make this sewing notebook. The sewing notebook has pockets for all of your sewing supplies like chalk pencils, markers, scissors, seam rippers, and then a felt book for your pins and your needles. It closes with a Velcro attachment and has an exterior pocket as well. So let's take a look at our pattern pieces. In felt, you're going to cut one on the fold. So whenever you see this designation on a pattern um, where it says cut on fold and has this right angle on your grain line with an arrow, it means that you lay your fabric folded and then put this edge of the pattern on that fold so that when you cut, you end up with a piece that is twice as big as the pattern piece. So that is our one felt piece cut on the fold. Then we'll go to pattern piece number two, which is your closure. You're going to cut one in fabric and one in your lining. So we have two pieces cut here, and that's just the tab with Velcro that closes your notebook. For pattern piece number three, you're going to cut one in your lining on the fold. So we have this piece cut doubled. So we've cut that piece on the fold. Then for pattern piece number four, which is your outside cover, you're going to cut two in fabric. This is not cut on the fold. So you'll end up with two separate pieces. For pattern piece number five, your inside pocket, you're going to cut one in fabric on the fold. So this is another piece where you will cut with your, um, uh, with your edge on the fold of the fabric so that when you open up your piece, you have one, but it is twice as large as the fabric, as the pattern piece, excuse me. Then for pattern piece number six, your inside uh, cover, you're going to cut one in lining on the fold again. So this piece opens up just like this. For your project, you'll also need an inch square of Velcro. And then of course your chalk pencils, scissors, pins, and a regular pencil as well. The first thing we're going to do is start by uh, making our notches. So on this pattern, you have a few notches. So we're going to start with our closure notch on pattern piece number two, which is your closure. You have a notch mark here and we will simply cut through that notch. On pattern piece number four, you have another notch here, so let's go ahead and cut that. And then on pattern piece number five, so you want to make sure here, the reason I switched this around is that this is my folded edge and this is my cut edge. And I just wanna make sure that I have um, my edge with the, the edge of my pattern piece that has the notch marking is on the cut edge and not on the folded edge because I don't wanna cut into my folded edge. So one notch there. Okay, those are all of our notches. Um, and now we will mark our Velcro placement your Velcro goes, um, so if you're looking here at the sample, there's one piece of Velcro attached to the closure and then another piece of Velcro attached attached to the outer pocket piece. We're gonna mark those two placements. Um, and I'm going to mark the placement for the closure on the uh, lining piece. So I'm marking it on the right side of the lining piece. I wanna take a pencil and I'm looking at this one inch square here and I'm just gonna poke through my pattern pencil. Okay. And 
I'll mark that with a chalk pencil. Okay, so I have all four corners marked there on my lining. Then on my outer pocket, it does not matter if I mark, I wanna mark on the right side of my fabric, but it doesn't mar matter if I mark here or here because they are the same. So this is my folded edge here. Now my um, Velcro placement is marked. My first construction step is going to be to create my closure. All right, so we're looking here at the little tab that has Velcro attached that closes the notebook. I want to take my lining and my fabric and put them right sides together. I want to note where my Velcro placement is. So my Velcro placement is on this side which means when I sew, I'm sewing three sides, including the edge with the Velcro placement closest to it. I am not sewing this edge with my notch. So the side with the edge with your notch is not getting sewn. I'm going to pin around the three sides that I'm sewing and then stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Right, so again, um, not sewing this edge with my notch, just sewing from here, pivoting, pivoting, and coming back down. Lining up with my half inch seam allowance mark. Always back stitching. I'll go ahead and trim my corners. So trimming next to my stitching, not through my stitching. Cutting the corner across and then trimming away from it. And then just because this is a smaller piece, I'm going to trim down my seam allowance about halfway. And then through that opening that I've left with my notch, I'm going to just flip through. And this is where you could use um, a blunt pencil. You don't want to use a sharp pencil because you'll end up poking through your stitching, but I'm just using a blunt pencil to turn. You could also use a chopstick for this. It's probably the best thing to do. Okay, so just poking out my corners, trying to get them as sharp as I can. Right. I'm going to go to the iron and just press this flat before I attach my belt. So we have gone ahead and pressed our closure and now we're going to do an optional top stitch around the edges um, that are sewn. So this isn't a necessary step. Um, you can always um, skip it, but we're just going to do a top stitch really close to the edge on the three sides that we've already sewn. So I'm going about an eighth of an inch away from my edge. Okay. 
Our piece is top stitched and now we're going to attach the Velcro. If you don't do the top stitch, you can move right onto the Velcro. So if you have ever used Velcro before, you um, know that there is a soft side to Velcro and then that rough side. The soft side is called the loop side and the rough side is called the hook side. I would recommend putting the um, soft side, the loop side onto your closure because that's probably what you're gonna end up brushing up against more, um, but it, it will work the same way whichever side you decide to use. So we're gonna take that soft loop side and put it uh, to the lining side of our closure. That's our outside, that is our inside lining. I still have my four dots um, from my previous step, and I'm just going to place that with the hook or the loop side of the Velcro facing up. Put one pin in it. And if you haven't used Velcro before, um, this might seem intimidating. Uh, it's really pretty simple. You're just stitching around the edges of the Velcro. Um, you shouldn't experience too many problems on your machine. So we're just going really close to the edge on every side. You just sew it the same way you would sew anything else. If you end up with loops in your stitches, you can always adjust your tension. So there's my Velcro attached. And now I'm going to grab my outside cover pieces. So the outside cover piece, you have two pieces of fabric cut. We're going to open those up. You have that notch that you made on both pieces. So there's one here and one here. It does not matter which piece you use. They are identical at this point. Um, but whatever one you use, you want to find the side with the notch and match that notch up to the notch in your closure with the fabric side facing the right side of the cover piece. So I'm putting these right sides together with the outside fabric. So you should see that Velcro facing away. I'm matching up my notches and pinning. along that edge. I'm going to stitch across my closure a little shy of a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to do a strong back stitch on this because um, this is a point that gets additional stress on the notebook. It's where you're pulling um, the Velcro open and shut. And now it's time to attach my outer pocket. The outer pocket was cut on the fold. Um, so I'm going to just open it up to show you what the entire piece looks like. We're going to keep it folded the way it was cut. And I have marked the Velcro placement on this piece. So I have four blue dots here. I'm going to take the remaining side of my Velcro and just place it with the um, loop, the hook side, sorry, the hook side up and pin it through both layers of the outer pocket piece. So this side, the hook side is always a little bit more difficult because it's just more like stiff. 
You might need some help pinning that. And then I'm going to sew around all four edges. here velcro is attached so I'm going to I'm going to take this piece that we've just sewn the outer pocket and stitch it to the remaining outside cover piece so we have the one outside cover piece that has the closure attached and then this one has nothing sewn to it yet. So I'm going to find the side that does not have a notch. So this side has my notch, this side does not, and put the cut edges of the outer pocket piece to the outside cover piece, right sides together with my Velcro facing out. Again, this is the side that has the notch and I have not sewn that. I'm not attaching the pocket to the side with the notch. So with these cut edges aligned, I'm going to pin around the perimeter and sew a little shy of my half inch seam allowance. The reason I sew just a little bit under my half inch seam allowance is so that when I put everything together at the end, these stitches that are holding things in place, which are called basting stitches, don't show on my final uh, piece. So I'm sewing here, here, and here. pocket is attached to the cover and we're now going to um, finish putting the cover together by sewing these two pieces together. So what I want to do is take both of uh, my edges that do not have the notch. So my notch is here and here with my closure. I'm taking the unnotched edges and putting them right sides together and stitching with a half inch seam allowance. This is a, a final permanent stitch. So I'm stitching with a half inch seam allowance along this edge to finish building my cover. pocket on one side, closure on the other side. I'm going to go to the iron and with the iron press my seam allowance open. And then we'll be back to start building the inside of the note by ready. I have pressed my outside cover, um, my seam there in the center flat. And now the entire outside cover has been constructed. We're going to move on to the inside. So on the inside of the notebook, you have um, this pocket 
with dividers. So on this side, we've got one, two, three, four different compartments. On this side, we've got two different compartments. You can do this any way you like. So if you have special tools at home that you wanna make sure fit in your notebook, feel free to change the way that these dividers are laid out. We're just going to go ahead in the tutorial and show you what we have suggested in the pattern, but know that you can sew these at any space interval you like. So let's um, move on to our inside pocket piece first. Now that inside pocket piece, if you remember, we um, cut a notch on one side. That notch represents our fold line. So when I open up this piece, I will have a notch here and then a notch here. I want to fold my fabric on that notch. So the notch becomes the fold. So where I have my fabric folded here is the same as my notch, same on the other side. So I wanna go over to the iron and just um, get this really laid out flat and crease. You might be able to press it with your hands, um, but I'm just gonna give it an extra press with the iron uh, and, I'll, and I'll be back. My pocket is now pressed flat. I have my cut edges here and I'm just going to start making the markings for my dividers. So we have some suggested marks um, on this pattern piece. Here there are lines for one, two, three, four different pockets. You can do this a couple of different ways. Um, you could just uh, keep this a little bit away from your cut edge and then make a mark at the end of each line. If you wanted, you could also just make teeny snips and mark it that way. I'm going to use this method with the pencil. And then um, this is going to end up becoming a line when we do our last step and sew down the center. So you don't need to mark the edge here, but I've got one, two, three lines here. And then to make those two pocket pieces um, on the other side, I'm going to flip, so I'm flipping my pattern piece around. And now this side has just two, two divided pockets with one line in the middle. So I'm going to mark a little extension of that line here. When you open it up, again, this is what it's going to look like. So I have my four pockets marked here. One, two, three, four. They correspond with these lines. One, two, three. And then when I flip it on this side, I have this line corresponding with this stitch mark. All right, so I'm gonna draw extensions of those lines coming up with my ruler. You can use anything that has just a straight edge. And then I'm going to take my inside cover piece, which if you remember was cut on the fold, and put my inside pocket piece uh, lowered onto the inside cover pieces piece with cut edges aligned. So I have my folded edge up here and then three cut edges aligned sides and bottom. I'm going to pin along these cut edges and then sew around the perimeter of the of the pocket um, and then stitch on my divider uh, lines. all pinned, so I'm sewing uh, a little shy of a half inch here, here, and here. are sewn 
And now I'm going to sew along my divider lines. If you're worried about your fabric layers moving a little bit, you can put a pin under each one of your lines to keep things from shifting. So I'm sewing up here, up here, up here, and up here through all layers. Making sure you backstitch at both ends so that when you put your, so put your tools in, they don't rip through the top of your pocket. So clip your threads now, pull out any pins you have. And now it is time to attach the cover to the interior. All right, so when you do this, the way that we traditionally um, open a book is with the closure to the right side. So if you want it to be that way, um, so what I mean is that when you are looking at the book, you have the closure here on the side and then you open up, you have the pockets along the bottom. If you want it to be done that way, you're going to uh, have your interior piece like this with your um, pocket facing away from you and then your exterior piece here with your um, tab on your left side. I'm going to put these right sides together. And then I will pin around the perimeter, leaving an opening on one of the top or bottom sides to flip the piece through. So I'm gonna start pinning now. All right, so I'm going to leave an opening on this, uh, perimeter, I'm going to leave an opening right here. So I'm leaving about two to three inches to flip through and I'm marking that with double pins. I'm going to sew from this set of double pins all the way around to this set with a half inch seam allowance. And I want to keep my um, seam uh, pinned open here so that when I sew it, it stays open. remove my pins, and then I'm going to clip my corners. So always when you're flipping something right sides out that has these right uh, angled corners, you want to trim them down so that when you flip, you have a cleaner turn. I'm trimming across and then tapering away. Coming across and tapering away. And I will trim a little 
little bit down along my seam here, just because there's a lot of bulk right there. Okay. All right, so here's my opening. I'm going to start flipping through. And then reach in and press your, uh, poke your corners out. And again, you might want to use a chopstick or a pencil for that. So I have my piece flipped. Um, I've got my opening here. I just want to tuck those edges. The, the edges of my seam allowance should just get tucked inside the bag so you form a straight edge where you had that opening. And I'm going to go to the iron and press this all flat again. The notebook is pressed flat and now we're going to top stitch around the perimeter of the notebook um, and seal that opening shut. So I have my opening that I flipped through here. I'm just going to put a few pins in and then I'm top stitching with about an eighth of an inch allowance all the way around. This is going to keep your edges um, nice and flat and crisp. notebook is top stitched it's time to add the icing on the cake and attach your felt pages that you can keep your needles and your pins in um, and I think this is the part that just kind of makes the notebook extra special and fun um, it's also very useful so here are my um, my felt page now you could cut more felt pieces than this if you wanted and have multiple pages inside of your notebook. Um, you could probably do up to uh, two or three. You probably wouldn't want to go past three pages because it would just make it um, a little bit too thick. So we just have one cut here on the fold. I'm going to take my notebook and just uh, put the short edges together and um, go ahead and press a crease along the center. If your fabric isn't really creasing, you can go over to the iron and get a better crease that way, but I just wanna be able to see the center mark of the notebook. So I can see mine here. I'm just going to outline it for you. And then I want to fold my felt in half and place that on my mark, then open it up. So I'm just, I, I can see the crease in my felt, but if you can't really see it, um, you can just do it like that. Okay. 
So just a few pins. All right, so there are two ways you can do this. You can either stitch from the cover side along that seam. So you just wanna sort of keep your needle inside the seam, or you can use the line um, from the last step and stitch along the line. Um, I'm going to I'm going to stitch along the spine here just to make it a little bit neater. So even though I have things pinned from this side, I'm gonna place my pins again on the spine on the outside because I don't want to sew with pins underneath. So the pins I just did were sort of just holding things in place so that I could flip it. And I'm gonna remove these. So stitching right along that spine. And then I will trim my threads one final time. And there you have it, your sewing notebook. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you share what you make with us. You can use the hashtag sewing notebook and share at Butcher's Sew Shop or at Sew Shop Junior on Instagram. Thanks.